Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are doing a reading wrap up for January. It is still a little bit early on in the month. Uh, I think we have like a week or a week and a half still left, but for the rest of this month, I am gonna be reading Throne of Glass and I'm gonna be doing a full reading vlog for that. So I figured I'd go ahead and do my reading wrap up now. And I've actually had a really good reading month so far, so I'm very excited to jump into the books. Uh, I do have one DNF, but even with the DNF, which we'll obviously talk about, uh, it was still really good. So without further ado, let's get started. So the very first book that I read this year was The Seven Year Slip. I actually think I kind of started this at the very end of December and it kind of carried on into January, but uh, this was so good. <laughs> I do want to give like a special little thank you and shout out to Chocolate Eclair. She is a fellow booktuber and she basically said this to me as like a congratulations for hitting 2000 subscribers, which currently we're at 2.6 and I also want to thank you guys like that is absolutely insane i'm so excited uh this channel has literally been the best thing ever and so much fun so thank you for just watching subscribing commenting interacting with me in any kind of way and obviously a special thank you to claire for sending me this book i literally loved it so much and i'm excited to talk about it so let's go ahead and talk about the seven year slip so this is essentially about a magical apartment that allows two people to meet seven years apart. And honestly, when I first heard that concept, I wasn't sure how that was going to work with a romance. It kind of reminds me of a movie that I saw, I think I saw like a long time ago, uh, about like a lake house. I think they like send each other letters through a mailbox or something like that. And I don't remember how that movie ended. <laughs> so I wasn't honestly sure how I was going to feel about this book. I was kind of concerned because they do live in different times that it was going to be kind of like bittersweet. But this was just sweet. It was so, so good. I literally loved every second of this book. This does talk a little bit about the passing of a family member. Essentially, the main character, Clementine, inherits this apartment from her aunt who has passed away. So obviously, that is like a reoccurring theme throughout this book, uh, which is definitely on the sadder side. But aside from that, and also to just like the theming of her aunt in general, her aunt was a very like happy-go-lucky person and just kind of like wanted to make the most of every moment in her life. So even with that kind of like sad undertone, uh, this is just such a good book and the romance was super cute. I loved the characters in this book. This was definitely a five-star book and honestly the best way I could have started my reading year and I'm very excited about it. So if you have not read this or you've been thinking about picking it up, highly recommend. And then the second book that I got sent by one of you guys is called Beauty in the Breakdown and this is by Renee Lynn Furlow. And this is actually also a fellow YouTuber and her YouTube content is more of like book and beauty content. And this book in particular is actually extra exciting because she wrote this book herself, which is absolutely insane. So this is a poetry book. And again, it is called Beauty in the Breakdown. I haven't actually read this book all the way through yet because I feel like poetry books you kind of just pick up here and there and read a couple. Uh, there's actually one poem in particular that I should have marked, <laughs> but it kind of talks about music being an outlet for your feelings. And I relate to that so much. Uh, the music that I listen to definitely correlates to how I was feeling in that moment. So I am so excited to keep digging into this poetry book. Also, it has just like a super cute cover. It's very like 90s to me, <laughs> which I love. And then also another thing that I really enjoy is the fact that it actually does have little illustrations and things. And then also, of course, she did write me a note in the front which I will cherish forever. <laughs> so again, thank you so much to Claire and Renee. I appreciate these books so much. And yeah, I still am like blown away that anyone would care to send me a book. <laughs> Next up, we unfortunately have our very first DNF for the year. This is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. And this one is kind of weird for me because it's a DNF, but I definitely can see myself picking it up again at a later date. I feel like TJ Klune does a really good job at like making really like cute, endearing characters. And this is no exception to that. Uh, and I actually do like the idea of the story. There's definitely like a kind of like a, a lesson to learn, if you will, wanting you to appreciate life. And I do really love and appreciate that message. But again, I feel like right now I'm in this mode of just wanting to read through a ton of different books. I'm very excited. It's the beginning of the year. Uh, my new reading goal is like fresh and I just want to like read, read, read. <laughs> and this one, unfortunately, is just moving way too slow for me. I do feel like TJ Klune's writing so far from what I've gotten has kind of more of a cozy type of vibe. And right now I'm just not in a cozy mood. I'm in a fantasy action romance kind of mood. And this just isn't hitting the mark. It's kind of like a, a good book, wrong time kind of situation. So moving on, the next book that we have is Nightbane, which is the sequel. And I think the final book of the duology for Light Lark. I liked the story of this book, 
but I think the things that I really loved and I thought were unique about Light Lark kind of got taken away in this book, which was really disappointing. I've been sitting here for several minutes trying and blabbering on, trying to explain my feelings without giving any spoilers away, but I'm, I'm finding it difficult. So basically what I'm gonna say about this series is there was a character in Light Lark that I was really rooting for and I was very excited about the direction of their story but then they kind of almost became insignificant in this one and with that that also too kind of like gave the ending of the story away so but that being said I did overall really enjoy the duology and uh, I'm very excited to read more from this author. I don't know if they have anything else out. I think Light Lark was their like debut novel, uh, but I'm excited to see what else they come out with. Next up I have, I think like my highlight for the month so far, which was Throne of the Fallen. <sighs> I feel like when people have like book related Q and A's, there's always like a question of, if you could pick any like book series to like live in, what would it be? This one would be it for me. I am obsessed with the Princess of Hell, uh, which by the way, this is the spinoff for Kingdom of the Wicked. And if you've never read Kingdom of the Wicked, essentially it is about Wrath, who is one of the seven princes of hell. And each of the princes of hell embody one of the seven deadly sins. And this one is about Envy, which coincidentally was one of my favorite princes from the Kingdom of the Wicked series. So I was really excited when I found out that we were getting a book solely on Envy. Also too, because uh, in Kingdom of the Wicked, they kind of painted him as being like a very like sad kind of lonely character. So I'm glad we kind of got you know, a love story for him, a happy ending for him. And aside from this being a romance, this is essentially about Envy having to save his kingdom by entering a game of riddles. And the love interest, Camilla, kind of gets entangled in this game. And then another thing that I was really excited for with this one in particular is we got to know a lot more about Sloth, which was kind of the, the Prince of Hell that we learned the least about from the Kingdom of the Wicked. So this one kind of like helped fill in some gaps, but also it made me feel even more confident in the hopes that we're gonna get a book for each prince. I'm really, really holding out hope. That's kind of like the game plan with these books because now I think Sloth is like the one that I'm most intrigued for next. The next one that we have is Crossed by Emily McIntyre. And this is the fourth book and most recent book in the Never After series. And unfortunately, this was definitely not my favorite of the series. I don't know, it was a really weird reading experience because I do really enjoy Emily McIntyre's writing. Like even if I don't like a character, I still wanna know what happens. So I definitely enjoyed reading this, but it's really hard to root for a romance when one of the people in said romance gives you the major ick. <laughs> The female lead's name is Amaya and she has like a younger brother and I absolutely loved both of those characters but Cade just on the back it says Father Cade Frederick is a holy man brought up in the streets of Paris he has dedicated his life to the church but there's a monster that lingers just beneath the surface a sickness one that bleeds darkness and feeds on the damned basically he's a holy man he's literally like the leader of a church but he also moonlights as a killer and I just hate that. Everything he did was just creepy and aggressive and this just irked me because of not the fact that he is religious or he is a holy man but because of the things that he does and because he is a holy man if that makes sense. That being said it did only take me a couple of days to read this and I did still give it a three star overall because I do feel like uh Emily McIntyre just has like a knack for writing really easy to read fun dark romances. So I still did enjoy a good chunk of this book. The male lead just really bothered me. Uh, so it kind of made it hard to really, really enjoy it to like get behind the romance. I definitely was not a fan of this romance. I wanted her to run for the hills, but obviously that's not what happened. <laughs> Next up and kind of like last but not least for this video, we do have the second and third book in the Separate and Dove series. And I am so happy that I picked this series back up again, but also kind of kicking myself for taking so long to do so because this is so good. I obviously can't really talk about the plot of these two books because it's the second and third book in a series. My camera battery just died, so it's much darker now and I don't remember what I was saying about these books, but essentially this series is about a witch and a witch hunter. It's a fantasy romance and it does kind of have actually like a found family type of vibe, which I didn't really think about until just now. Uh, not in the typical kind of cozy fantasy type of way. I definitely would not consider these cozy fantasy at all. They're just 
fantasy romance but there is definitely a little bit of found family vibe and these books are really fun there is definitely like a main kind of plot or like storyline throughout the entire series uh, but the amount of like little mini adventures that they go on and the things that the characters have had to go through has been so entertaining. There was a couple of different times when I was reading the second book and then specifically again when I started this one where I was just thinking about like how good this series is because like I don't even really care about the romance. It's just a really good well written series. I actually was gonna wait to do this series until after I finished Throne of Glass but I started the second book in a duology. Uh, the first book I read like over a year ago and I was so lost like I could not remember a single thing that happened in the first one and the way that the second one starts it kind of starts in the middle of like action. I was hoping eventually it would kind of click but nothing was clicking like I just was completely lost. <laughs> so that kind of got me worried about this series because I had read Serpent and Dove I think like two or three months ago. So obviously a year is a lot longer than a couple of months, but I did actually just go through all of the books that I read in my tier ranking video. And I mentioned in that video that I couldn't really remember what Serpent and Dev was about. So that's what prompted me to like pick this series back up. And I'm really glad that I did because I have been thoroughly enjoying this. I'm very excited, honestly, to finish filming this video so I can get back to this book. And with that, that is everything that I have for this video. Those are all of the books that I have read in January so far. Again, we do still have a little bit more time in January. January, but I'm gonna be reading Throne of Glass the rest of the month. So you'll get all of my thoughts on that entire series uh, sometime soon. I'm estimating, I'm hoping that it's only gonna take me a couple of weeks to read. Originally I was gonna to try to read the entire series in a week because I've seen other people do that, uh, but I looked it up and the average book count for the entire series is 7,000 pages, which would mean I would have to read a thousand pages every single day for a week, and that is just not realistic for me. I on average read one to 300 depending on if it's like a weekday or weekend. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm gonna try for two weeks. <laughs> but anyway, totally not relevant to this video. That is everything that I have for you today. Overall, I feel like my reading month was pretty good. I hope you have also had a very good start to your reading year. Let me know in the comments what books you've read this month. And I think that's everything that I have to say. I hope you have slash have had the most amazing of days and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!